Hello, this is Julie. We had an op opportunity yesterday to get a free file download from Design Bundles. I'm not sure how long this file is for free, but it's a lovely collection of watercolor florals and birds, elements, borders. Really nice collection. These images are all in PNG or JPEG format in 300 DPI, which are great for printing. So if you want to use these designs for doing print and cut projects, we can do that using Make the Cut. First, we need to download the free file and unzip it. And then we can open Make the Cut. And this is what I did with it. I'll show you the outlines or cutting lines there and then I printed it and was able to do get my cutter to cut around the printed images. So I'm going to show you how I brought this in to make the cut. I'll click a new page here. The first thing we need to do in order to get an image and to make the cut is use pixel trace which is control shift T or just clicking on the icon. Now you need to find where you downloaded the folder comes in as the name design bundles watercolor flower and flowers and birds. The first place I went was into the bouquet folder and I picked out the one that I like the best. Let's see, I think it was this one, number five, bouquet five. So I double click on it and it comes into the software. What I'm going to do is bring in the texture and black it out, then set the threshold to 240 and press apply changes. Now this shows you what will be brought in and you can see it here. I really don't want these lines to be there. I wonder if DSpec would take care of those. Nope. So maybe taking the threshold down a little bit. It'll keep going down. It's all I want is the lines around the image like it is here and you see how it's going to come in on the left here. So once I've gotten rid of everything outside the lines then I import and finish tracing. So now I have the base of my design. I would like to do a 3D decoupage with this. So to do that I'm going to bring in individual elements to cut out and uh, stack on top of these with pop dots in between so I end up with a 3D project. So to do that I again go to the trace button and this time I'm going to go to the elements folder and I'm going to pick out the flowers, the individual flowers that go with that design. Number two PNG. Now the PNG files you could do an alpha trace on probably, but I want to texturize and black out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, when you have a PNG file, it just does a perfect trace for you. You don't have to worry about settings. So I'm going to import that one. Comes in with uh, no background, which is really nice. Now I'm going to get a couple of these others because I want the leaves and these are a little different flowers, so I'm going to bring those in too. So let's get the leaves. That's number 19. Open. And again, I'm going to use Alpha Trace, Texturize Path, and Blackout Path. Apply Changes and Import. Finish Tracing. Now I want to get the other flower. Let's see, I think that was number 5. Open. 
Again, alpha, texturize, blackout, apply, import, and finish tracing. So now I have all my layers. I want to resize these to fit because I'm going to stack them over. They can be the same size or they can be um, smaller. They can be bigger. However you, you want your finished project to be. I've tried to make these about the same size. I can click again to get the rotate button to kind of get the angle on this to make sure that I got it the right size. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger. And I noticed that there's another one over here just the same, but it's mirrored. To do that, what I'm going to do is hold Control and Shift and click. It gives me another one. Then I'm going to use the mirror icon at the lower left corner of the screen to make it go in the other way. So now I have those two. And this one I'll rotate a little bit so that it looks about the same as this at the top. And mostly I'm doing this for resizing purposes. Click several times to get the straight handles to resize it where I want because it's going to be overlaying this and I want them to kind of line up. So those look good. The next thing I want to do is check the size of this leaf, see if it will fit nicely. It's a little big, so again, I'll click it to get the straight handles on it trying to make it approximately the same size as is on this bigger picture because this is going to be in the background. These are going to all be cut out and this these pieces are going to lay over the background with pop dots. So I need a few of these. Let's see, I'll just, I need one, two, three, four. I could actually do some extra ones here if I wanted. I think I'll just do four, so use control and shift, drag, and just put some control shift, drag, control shift, drag. Just put them on the mat where I can see them well. So now I have all the pieces of my design except for the centers of the flowers. And I don't see a piece when I go here. I don't see an exact same center idea and I would like to have another layer of this flower centers over the original. So to do that I'm going to get that original flower again, open it, and this time I wonder if Alpha Trace will work on that too. Let's see. Oh it does. Now what I want to do is I'm going to hold the control key and I'm going to drag my cursor just around the center. So you see that I'm just capturing this little part and apply the changes, see what I get. So I get a, a square here and that's okay, I'll import that. But I think I would like to do something a little different. I'm going to use a color trace on that section. Click on color, then use the eyedropper to select just the black in there and apply changes. Oh, and now I get a nice outline of just the black, the middle section, so I can cut that out. So I'm going to import that and finish tracing. So I'll keep this one, and I, I need three of them to go on my three flowers. I'll delete the other one that I don't need. I'm going to set this up there and see if I can resize it. When you're dragging, you notice that these black out. If you hold the D key down, you can still see the image below as you drag. I'm holding the D key on my keyboard. I'm gonna, that helps when you're trying to resize everything perfectly. 
and I've got that one and I'm going to duplicate that control shift and drag but I'm going to make the duplicate a little smaller because I want it to go over this smaller flower. I'm going to hold the D key and drag it over there to resize it. We've got that one and control shift and drag gives me another duplicate. I'm going to hold a D while I move that around to see if it's the same size. It's about the same size. I think I'll leave it there. So I can move these onto the page somewhere where they're out of the way for selection purposes. This is way too big. What well, I want to print this on eight and a half by 11 paper so that I can uh, cut it a little smaller. I'm going to select all control A or you could use this arrow in the lower left corner. And I'm going to resize this with the lock on. I'm going to resize it to maybe eight inches. So I could eight, type eight and press enter. And it resizes everything so that they will all fit. Now I can rearrange this some um, so that They're spread out a little bit more. And now I'm ready to print this. You can add your registration marks and then cut this on your preferred cutter. If you want to export as SVG, select all and go to File, Export, Selection to SVG, and Go to where you want to save it. I will save this as water color floral. Okay. And save it. And now I have an SVG file that will work with my other cutters that are not supported by Make the Cut. Now I can go to File and Print Preview so you can see what it's going to look like. And I went ahead and printed that and then I cut it on my cutter using the registration marks. And then I layered them to put them together to make a nice decoration for a scrapbook page or a larger front of a card. Now you could, if you wanted to, make this so it fit on, let's say, an A2 size card. I would resize this to, say, five and a half inches wide. And then this would be a nice piece for a card. So let me know if you have any other questions about how to print and cut a pre-made design using Make the Cut. Thanks for watching.